Yo, what is going on, guys? The regional in Germany with a name I can't pronounce just ended, and Stefan Ivanov ended up taking down the whole thing with Baby Blounds Greens. Definitely a deck I wouldn't have predicted to win the event or have as much success as it did. But with the way the day two meta kind of shaped up, it was a really, really a good day two meta for the Baby Blounds Greens. It's got it's got a good Mewtwo and Picaron matchup, where the, which were the two most popular decks in uh, day two, and then also has a good ADP matchup, which was up there as well. Um, some of the harder matchups didn't quite show up, like the Malamar matchup can be tough. Um, the Tina Garchomp uh, matchup can be tough. Neither of those decks really showed up um, in Germany. Um, so it was pretty much uh, yeah, pretty much a free roll for the Baby Blounds Greens. And it did take the top two spots at the tournament, first and second. Ste Stefan Ivanov, like I said, won the whole thing. This is his list. So, of course, you know, with the regional just going by... And us having a championship deck list out there, we're going to have to go ahead and try it out. So this is what we got today. Let's go ahead. Let's play some games. Into a game. We got a pretty good start. Uh, Ultra Space, Greens, Acrobike, and three fires to work with here. Uh, we're up against a Jirachi. At the very least, there's a Jirachi. Uh, who knows what else they got. They do have the Mew and Mewtwo deck box and sleeves. So if I had to guess, I would guess it is Mew and Mewtwo. Um, so our game plan is going to be a knockout two. Mew and Mewtwo tag teams. Uh, we don't have to be too aggressive. Uh, I don't have to look to like Blazer, this Jirachi, or anything. We can be play it slow. Almost kind of wait for them to take the first knockout if we really want to. Um, while we can kind of just work on our hand with our greens and our acro bike, acro bike, and so on, and just try and play into the knockout at some point. Don't have to be super aggressive. Can kind of take our time until our opponent sends up a Mew and Mewtwo. They have no way to kind of checkmate us in any way um they can't use like espion deoxys to knock out both our able cephalons in play or anything like that of course we don't have to just KO mew and mutis if they want to use breaks and zard we can knock out that as well that's fine with me there's that rainbow to it um so yeah we can just chill take our time like i said i can't do any kind of checkmate scenario where they're just like all right knock out knock out uh, you lose the game because you I benched you out so we can just have two blissephalons in play Obviously, we want more if we can get more blissephalons in play. That's that much better Definitely not gonna complain if I top deck a blissephalon and then ultra space into blissephalon and then acrobike into my fourth blissephalon And just have the whole squad set up um, If we do draw prizes if we do end up having to draw prizes like we knock out a Dedenne We also have stuff like burst GX with the blissephalon GX that we can utilize to uh, Play around uh, There's a welder for two off the dead chain so pretty good draw there from our opponent um off that did a change we can like, if we get into a scenario where we knock out a tag team and a jirachi or tag team most likely tag team and jadene we can do like a set up for a burst gx play to just kind of close out the game there so it's not the worst thing to have happen there's a retreat to a jadene so they definitely have a switch in their hand that is for sure fire crystal top deck is good i'm gonna start with an acro bike because i wouldn't mind getting pretty much anything here gonna take the greens i'm gonna play the greens or flint and welder i believe is what i want to get here flint and welder maybe i should have actually taken that other ultra space now i'm kind of regretting taking the greens um i haven't played a whole time with this deck so i am going to be not playing as optimally as i would like obviously learning along the way here yeah i feel like i maybe should have taken the what's it called instead there um attach to the bench guy at the least and then pass to our opponent Next turn, we could flint away those two, grab ourselves more fires, um, and then welder them there. Or we could just welder first because we want to draw into fires, but actually we kind of want to draw into... I want to draw into fires, but I also want to draw into a way to get a... Uh, what's it called? I think I might welder. I need a way to get another basic, um, as well as also needing more fire energy. I need a little bit of a little bit of everything here, actually. Yeah, I think I should have taken the, the ultra space instead there off of the... Um, off, instead of the greens, instead of the second greens, I think I should take in the ultra space. I think I'm going to be regretting that very shortly here, as our opponent is probably going to be able to knock out, pretty easily knock out back-to-back -back Baby Blissephalons. Um, they might also be able to, we might also just not have another Pokemon, which means they might just win through that and bench us out, which would kind of stink. Yep, there's the switch I was talking about. There's no way they would retreat to Dedenne if they didn't have the switch. I'm trying to make sure I can't Blazer knock out their Jirachi, even though... Probably wouldn't have gone for it anyways. There's the tag call. Could see him just go ahead and grab Guzman Hala for the turn. Make sure they get that energy. Probably utilize that weakness guard energy because they don't need that later on. There's Guzman Hala and Cynthia and Caitlyn. Yeah, probably going to see the Guzman Hala happen here. They can go ahead and get, get themselves a hearth if they want to replace our ultra space. But actually, 
I mean, for me personally, that I, I wouldn't mind that at all. I wouldn't mind my opponent putting a hearth in play here to help me find fire energy. That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, we'll see what they grab here off the uh, off the Guzma and Hala. Um, yeah, if they grab a hearth, I wouldn't. I would be like, all right, that's cool. We'll take that because um, I can utilize a hearth to get that energy I need to get this one shot on this Brakeson Zard. But we'll see what they grab here. It is a hearth. I fully expect it to be put in play. They did get the rainbow energy. Probably means their weakness guard energy is prized because there's no reason they wouldn't put the weakness on this. And this actually means we need one less energy to knock out this Brakeson Zard. Oh, looks like they're avoiding putting the... I mean, I would also like it if they didn't put the hearth in play. Um, no matter what they do, I like it. If they don't put hearth in play, awesome. If they put hearth in play, awesome. Yeah, no matter what they do here, I'm a big fan of it. Because uh, if they don't put Hearth in play, I get to search for another Blacephalon and we don't just lose. If they do put Hearth in play, then I get to use Hearth to make sure I have enough energy to knock this out. But I think I actually just pretty much have enough energy anyways. We're close here for sure. Alright, goodbye. Baby Blacephalon, go ahead. Baby Blacephalon. There's a draw, so now we almost are guaranteed the energy. I can go Flint first. Um, Arcid Welder 2. Four, five, get rid of two things, but I could just use the flint to get rid of two, thin out the deck and draw different card, draw some different cards, I think. And I think I want to do that. Um, we'll be able to use one of our fire crystals here, but it means when I welder, we'll see some more stuff. I mean, I kind of expect to get reset stamped in this next turn, um, no matter what. And I'm not going to use the ultra space yet because I would like to draw a Blacephalon and then also get another Blacephalon with the ultra space. I don't want to acro bike into a baby Blacephalon anymore, though, so we're not going to play the acro bike first. Going to play the I uh, bench those guys. Uh, actually, I actually get to keep... Well, I drew into that fire flint. Let's go with the Acro Bike so we can get... There's a reset stamp. I actually... Yeah, I'm going to play that right now, I think. They just used the Brilliant Flare. This sounds like a good... That sound. That's a good... That's a pretty good hit off an Acro Bike. If I had to hit anything off an Acro Bike right here... That one's, that one's pretty good. All right, I could flint away a fire in this... Or two fire and then crystal for three back. Or I could just crystal save the flint. We still have quite a few fires in the deck. I think I'm just going to save it. Grab the two fires, and then Fireball Circus for five only because he did attach double rainbow. Like I said, his weakness guard energy was probably prized. We actually have game set up here with three cards off the prize cards, I think, plus greens for the um, beast ring. So I think we have game pretty much set up here as long as our opponent doesn't reset Stamper Hand away. And if they do reset Stamper Hand away, we got a couple turns to work with. we got two Blacephalons in play that we can utilize and so on. So yeah, we still have some stuff to work with. Not too worried about... Uh, Losing the game if we do get reset stamp. We got a couple turns to work with. We'll have the next turn and one turn after. At the very least, if we find another basic Pokemon, we'll have that turn to work with. We are running out of Baby Blacephalon, so. So we probably want to try and close out the game with this Baby Blacephalon at the very latest. If they do knock out this one and then this one, we want to use this one to win the game. Now, we'll still have access to Beast Ring at that point as well. And they did give us access to the Giant Hearth as well. So even if they reset stamp us, we'll have access to Giant Hearth. Currently, like I said, I think we have game in hand. We can go greens. Get ourselves a fire crystal and a beast ring. Beast ring to the Blacephalon after they knock us out. Attach, flint, and go ahead. Or win the game. There's the reset stamp, though, off the Stellar Wish. Yeah, I'm not super surprised they were able to access one of their reset stamps. And yeah, like I said in the intro, this is how we want to play these tag team matchups. We want to knock out two tag teams. We want to knock out um, the Zard, and then we want to knock out the Mewtwo. We don't want to knock out Jirachi, but we don't want to knock out the Dene. Let some reset stamp us lower. There's a Welder. All right, so they're doing just fine off that reset stamp they probably actually got back everything that uh they wanted they probably got themselves a reset stamp as well as a welder combo for the mewtwo so yeah they really didn't lose anything here i guess they don't have an attacker to utilize quite yet to actually one shot this though that's what they're currently missing actually they do not have an attacker they can use there's no uh no turbo strike no latios with the tag purge yeah they're a little bit short on attacking here We'll see what the tag call gets them all right uh, looking at our hand we have we have a greens but i don't think we have enough stuff to actually pull off a win right now um let me see we can get flint crystal we need like double custom yeah we don't quite have enough stuff right now to be able to pull off uh the win on our turn i don't think we'll have to build it up into it over two turns um but our opponent oh they can double blaze all right they're gonna hit us with the double blaze here that's fine all right, so we can go Beast Ring, can Hearth for two, could get a Flint. That's not for still an energy short in that instance, and Flint takes two cards out of our hand. We'll see what we top, we'll see what we top deck. Another Pokey Year. 
I'm gonna giant hearth away one of those, get two fire. I'm then gonna play the acrobike, see what that gets us. It does get us a flint. We could go beast ring. Well, let's see, beast ring, fire crystal. Okay, this might actually do it. So if we go greens and we get ourselves beast ring, fire crystal, then we beast ring for two. Oh, we might be one energy short here. So if we beast ring for two, we'd have three left in deck. We'd flint away these two. Get uh, the last three. We'd attach one out of hand. Oh no, we might just have enough. Okay, hold up. B string for two, three left. Flint away those, grab three, attach crystal three. I think this is enough. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the B string and the crystal. I'm gonna count it out in my hand in my head again. This, get rid of those. Oh, this, get two out. That, get rid of those. Okay, I think it is enough. I think we've done it. So B string for two to the active Babel Cephalon. And this is why this deck's tag team matchups are really good. Uh, you don't need the full welder combo eventually. You can just do the B string. You have a couple turns to pull off the B string play instead. Yep, attach Fiery Flint. Get rid of these two. Just enough cards in the hand to work with. Get the three out of the deck. Crystal for another three. And that's six. That's 300 damage. That's enough to knock out our opponents. Mew and Mewtwo. And we're going to take a dub here in this first game with the baby blacephalon greens knocking out this mewtwo yeah that's pretty easy it's about how i expected it to go if we were to win um yeah and that's what we said we want to play around the reset stamp and we want to be like all right you're gonna reset stamp us to three only that's all we're letting you reset stamp us to and then we're gonna draw you know hopefully draw a reasonable reasonable three cards and we there was that, that was pretty reasonable three cards Latios GX start from our opponents. Um, Psychic Dragon deck box. I'm I'm guessing we're up against Malamar. Um, so this matchup uh, is pretty tough, actually. Um, definitely winnable. Um, I'm not super scared of it or anything. Beast rings are a big deal in this matchup. We already have one of those in our hand. We have a greens as well in our hand. We have the Ultra Space on top of that. So our hand is actually okay looking here. One thing we don't really have to play around too much in this matchup, but sometimes they do play it, is Reset Stamp. Reset Stamp, they do sometimes play. <laughs> um, it's not very good overall in Malamar, because the consistency issues are like the first issue with Malamar. Um, but sometimes we do have to worry about Reset Stamp in Malamar. And, I mean, I wouldn't be that surprised if our opponent did play um, did play Reset Stamp here. Ooh, interesting. Acrobike took something instead of a treasure. Treasure is usually always super good to get off of the acro bank so i'm curious to see what they actually got we can go for a blazer here so this is a matchup where we want to go with for blazer aggressively um as long as we have some amount of fire energy prize if we have zero fire energy prize we don't want to do it so we're going to check that almost immediately here see what our top deck is it is a fire um i think i do this we do want to use victini at some point here all right the whole squad's in here let's see there's 10 13 so there's three fire prize so we have actually a pretty good chance of hitting a fire here and knocking out this jirachi Three welder, three greens. Um, all right, cool. Let's take a fire. Um, Ultra space. Bump the radiant forest. Ultra space. Grab ourselves a baby blue cephalon. Yeah. So the thing about like this deck uh, versus ooh, whiff on the poke here. So it has to be flint welder here off this green. So I was hoping I would see a welder there so I could probably get something else. Um, but Flint Welder is what's going to have to I could go for the Heat. Well, the Heat Factory is going to be a little bit slow because of that. Yeah. It's going to have to be the Flint Welder. Attach active. And Blazer. Hoping for an energy hit here. That would be great. Nope. It is a Rosa. I mean, knowing where Rosa is isn't terrible. Just would have liked to turn one knockout to get this uh, one prize matchup. Prize exchange going in our favor. But I'm going to have to settle for a nope on that. Um... What was I saying? I was saying something I completely lost my train of thought when I went for the blazer. It. Um, that's fine. Let's see. Two damage. Lily for two. They only have one psychic in the discard pile, so I don't. Oh, they got a Verdian Forest. All right, so maybe, maybe they're gonna have a. Uh, yeah, I would like that Ultra Space to stick around for another turn. They definitely. That was definitely one of their two cards they got though, so I have a feeling they're not gonna have a super strong turn. Yep, they're going for Hypnosis on the turn. Let's see, will we wake up? All right, that's pretty good. I almost just wanna go for the blazer knockout again because we know there is so many fire in the prize cards, but I also just wanna draw a prize card, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a prize card. If I knock this out, that means they can't use Giratina next turn. So I think I just wanna make sure I get this knockout here. Um, 
Hmm. Could just go heat factor away the fire and then plan to use the fiery flint after that or the crystal. I'd rather use the flint, but if I draw too many good cards, I won't be able to. So I'd rather crystal for three. So let's go ahead and thin out the deck by one more fire. Um, we are trying to find Victini. That is one of the main Pokemon we're trying to find for this matchup, so we can utilize that. He's pretty good in this matchup. All right, so here it looks like I want to use the crystal, unless I want to flint away a fire and a green. So I think I'm just going to go with the crystal here, get three, because we do need to discard two for the Fireball Circus to take a knockout. I can also attach one to the bench dude, and then, yeah, Fireball Circus. Um, and especially if we're utilizing Heat Factory a lot, which we, we ideally actually want to be utilizing, we do want to find the... Um, Oops, I just auto-clicked the Rosa. I didn't want the Rosa there. I, sh I wanted a different prize card. I, I do want the Rosa in my hand more so than a Fire Energy, I guess, but I didn't want to... Yeah, I didn't want to grab the Rosa here. So that's an oops. Um, but yeah, if, we can, if the Heat Factory can just stick and play, we can utilize Victini. I mean, we're going to be running through our Fire Energy with that. Then we try and utilize Victini and then uh, do that. That would be great. So yeah, we definitely want to... Um, definitely want to find Victini, use Victini. Hopefully Heat Factory just sticks at this point. That would be great. They've already used two Verdian Forests. They're spell tagging their Inke, so that almost makes me think that they plan to use Inke here at some point. And also, our opponent starting Latios was a big deal. I do think this matchup was a little bit unfavored because we like if they attack turn two with Giratina, we need to find Welder or Beast Ring plus three energy every single turn. And at some point, we usually end up whiffing a knockout. And that's where our opponent gets too far ahead. But in this game, super slow start. Um, no turn two Giratina attack, no turn three Giratina attack. Only one Malamar in play and the Latios in play when we are up a prize. Pretty sure we had that one. We we're going to have that one uh, one for sure, even if they continued playing. So I don't really blame them for conceding there. All right. Into another one. Here we go. Or up against the Nuzzle Boys. They usually don't play any stadium. So I'm just going to grab Heat Factory and I'm just going to run with it. I'm going to grab Heat Factory, throw it in play. I'm going to grab myself a Fiery Flint as well, I think. So we make sure we have enough energy for next turn. Yeah, I'm just going to try and Heat Factory every turn uh, until the... The, the dogs come home or whatever. Um, all right, attach active, and we're going to pass over to our opponent. Yeah, we're going to Heat Factory. We're going to try and Heat Factory every single turn in this game. Um, <laughs> usually, the Nuzzle deck, like I said, does not play stadiums, so we're going to abuse that. And by just throw Heat Factory and play turn one, um, I could have gone for an Ultra Space to try and set up some more Pokemon, but I don't know. I would I like the idea of just kind of building up my whole, going through my whole deck. Um, we do theoretically just lose next turn if we are not able to um, get another basic Pokemon. But we're going to be drawing seven cards. We can take four fire out of our deck with the Fiery Flint. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it is a potential concern, but I think we'll be okay. Here comes the first Snuggly Generator for four. Um, they're going to be a little bit short on energy to knock us out. They didn't play a supporter turn one, but they probably have access to Coco Prism or the what's it called to be able to knock us out. Anyways, right, we're going to Fiery Flint. Get rid of these two. Get four fire. We do need to draw to a basic. Our whole basic squad is in the deck. Even drawing into the Blacephalon GX wouldn't be terrible here because they haven't built up enough energy to really stop him or to one-shot him. So it would be fine if we did uh, go about it that way as well. There's a Blacephalon and nothing to worry about. Um, yeah, Welder 2 are active. We got Rosa to find ourselves the small guy, Victini. Uh, probably just want a Welder here. Uh, yeah, I just want Welder. And we haven't attached yet. Ken Fireball Circus. Attach here. And then, yeah, Fireball Circus, discard two. Like I said, being aggressive about the what's it called. And, uh, yeah, taking these knockouts. All right, get ourselves a prize card here. Being aggressive with the Heat Factory. That's what I want to say. Being really aggressive with the Heat Factory. Want to utilize Victini as soon as possible. We do have the Rosa. So after they knock out this Blacephalon, we will be able to go. Um, yeah, after they knock out this Blacephalon, we will be able to go. Rosa, get the Victini, attach to it, B-String to a Blacephalon, or attach to that Blacephalon, and then Welder to the Victini on the next turn. Either way, we're just going to be able to Rosa for the, the thing, put him in play. That's going to be the idea on that turn. A little bit short on energy here, uh, but we have Welder. We're going to be able to, once again, draw seven cards between Welder and Heat Factory. Should see another Crystal or a Flint or something. Shouldn't be that big of a deal for sure. All right, there is five energy in play. They need a... E power, but I would be very surprised if they didn't have an E power. Okay, there's a Volkner that will get them a E power and another lightning. And yeah, we're back at it again. E power knockout. They'll definitely have a Raichu to work with next turn. They're going to be a little bit behind uh, each turn on needing something to 
boost it, but that probably won't be that big of a deal for them. Turn to turn. All right, draw for turn. All right, we are going to play these Poke Years, thin out the deck of all that. I have two Welder and the Rosa in hand, so I don't really need to find any other supporters. So if I can take a supporter out of the deck like this, that's just fine. Fire Crystal for three. So here's where we can get in trouble. Um, and maybe I have overstepped. We'll see. Keep Factory, draw three. There's an Ultra Space if we have to. I don't want to. I want to leave the Heat Factory in play um, for the whole game. But uh, we'll see if we draw to another basic. All right, we're still cruising. Uh, we do need to Fire Crystal here. Get three more so we can use three to take the knockout on this Raichu. And I believe we can attach to our bench as well. Yep. And then we have the Fireball Circus. Discard three. And then once again, leaving the Heat Factory in play, which is ideal. That is ideally what we want to be doing here. Boom, get ourselves another prize card. Once again, they're a little bit short on the knockout. Just 20 damage short, though. They're going to be able to attach for turn. We know they have an energy because of the Volkner, or if not, one of the cards in their big their big hand probably is an energy. Um, so yeah, Nussle, go for it. Um, yeah, one of the cards in their hand is probably an energy, almost certainly. Um, and if we keep the game up like this, where we're keeping them kind of low on energy in play, when we do put Double Cephalon GX in play, we will also reset stamp them and make it awkward for them to actually... Um, yeah, make it awkward for them actually to uh we're gonna reset stamp them make it awkward for them to actually knock out the blissephalon gx for sure uh, if they choose to use you know another snuggly generator turn then um that's also fine with me but yeah the one way i think they'd be able to one shot our blissephalon gx will be the reshiram the reshiram and zekrom which usually almost all uh nuzzle decks play a one one of one fire one energy a one 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 of one fire energy one one energy switch and one reshiram uh, so that's like the only thing that I think they'll be able to use to one-shot us. Yeah, more than enough energy. They got the Coco Prism out, so now they have more than enough energy to be one-shotting the Baby Blacephalons. There we go. Uh, and one thing they have to be careful, actually, is running out of Raichus. They only play four Raichu. We're not going to have the second Raichu here. Draw for turn. I'm going to start with B-String because this has to happen. Oh, no. We only have one Fire in the deck for B-String. Oops. Overstepped slightly there, then. B-String to the Blacephalon. Um... We we'll just have to welder next turn to the Vixini, but that's awkward because then we're starting to run out of welders. Um, let's see here. Well, I am going to let's see. There's two fire energy prizes. There's a good. There's a good chance I pull a fire energy off my prize cards. We do have to Rosa. Gonna get this guy. Going to get another B string. Doesn't do anything for us. We need the fire crystal. There's no fire energy to grab. Um, so we're gonna have to grab the fire crystal. Vixini fire. Do, 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 do. Good acrobike. We only have one fire crystal left. I think we're just going to hope to pull a fire off our prize cards here. So we're going to go uh, fire crystal for three. One, two, three. Because there is 16 fire in this deck. Um, attach active. It would have been very nice if there was one more fire in our deck. Bench the Victini. And then fireball circus. Discard three. Knock out this Raichu. And get through another one of them. Um, next turn, we might have to put the Ultra Space in play to actually get ourselves one of those dudes. See, there's the fire. All right, we're all good. We're going to be able to Welder 2 to the Victini. Save our last Fire Crystal, which would be great. Um, we'll probably have to put Ultra Space in play next turn. Um, so we can... Actually, get, us getting Reset Stamped here would be super annoying. They definitely... They usually play one Reset Stamp to work with um, to disrupt the hand. Uh, and that might be a, a killer for us. Um, this is why, like, the one prizer matchups are kind of tough for Baby Blacephalon, stuff like Malamar. Stuff like this deck even can be pretty tough, because we have to, like, constantly have six energy to work with to make this guy work. This guy doesn't need as much energy to work with, which is cool, but there's the resetting whole Mars Shadow. Okay, they're like, you know what, we're done with your Heat Factory, gonna get rid of that. That's fine with me, I was probably not gonna use it and have to use Ultra Space next turn anyways, So, but our, but our opponent doesn't know that, right? So... Um, but for me, that works out just fine. I'm debating if I want to knock out one of the Molgas next turn with the Custom Catchers, or if I want to save the Custom Catchers to deal with getting reset stamped. I could go double custom, knock out the Molga, take two more energy out of play, because right now they're doing 120, which is pretty close to being able to one-shot a Blacephalon. Um, so I kind of might, I might just want to take some extra energy out of play, but they only have one more Raichu to work with, so I think probably running them out of Raichu actually is the better way to go here. All right. Um, I think this is a perfect time to... Um, actually, I would like to draw into the GX and our last Blacephalon, so I'm going to Welder first. There's the GX. I think this is a good time to reset stamp, or I could wait until... I could wait with the reset stamp as well. 
until next turn. But I, I don't want them to get. Re I don't want them to reset Sam. Me is the thing I want to try and avoid. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's a pretty reasonable time to reset stamp. Let's go for it. We'll see how it ends up working out. It could be a really bad time to reset stamp. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to use these acrobites here. Didn't out the deck of stuff I want. Giving up a custom catcher there doesn't feel great. Flint is very good after we're going to use infinity. And I'm going to go ahead and poke gear right now because it guarantees get me the gets me the welder because I have seven cards left in deck. And then, yeah, infinity... I don't want to bench this guy. Hmm. I'll have to probably... Well, if he doesn't knock out my active... Well, he'll definitely knock out my active. He'll have to bench it anyways. But it could get Great Catcher next turn. But I have the switch. They're doing 120. So I doubt they'd have everything. So if they want a Great Catcher and just hit it... I could bait them because I kind of... I kind of bait them because I have the switch here. Yeah, we'll just go with the Infinity here like this. Yeah, I, I like the way he's going to play it like this. i got a Fire Crystal to take 3-8. But I have a Flint. So I should be able to get all the energy I need here. My deck is basically just energy at this point, And there's an energy out of my... Uh, prize cards, so yeah, we should be all good on energy. And my hand's gonna get thinned out enough to the point where the custom catchers might be able to draw us cards. Man, yeah, maybe not quite, but yeah, not quite actually. There's a Pachirisu. Discard pile. All right, there's a Volkner. How many flints do we have left? We have two flints left. We actually have a lot of flints left. There is the reset stamp. All right, here we go. Reset stamp in us. I kind of want to, I, this, well, another reason I want to reset stamp them there is to hope that they want to have be able to reset stamp us. Um, so we're not, we're probably not, we're probably going to have to go with, oh no, it's doing 140. Well, I kind of, I think I have to swing with the, well, Cephalon GX here. I could try and, no. Yeah, our hand, our deck is pretty much all fire energy. I think I have to send up Cephalon GX here and go with the Burst GX. I think that's the only way for us to win. And then we have to kind of hope our opponent doesn't have enough stuff to respond. All right, we're gonna go with the ultra space. Okay. Attach, custom for two. There's a greens. Can play that. Get ourselves a welder and a setup we got going on here. Um, I don't know. Welder and switch seems okay. Just in case. I mean, they don't have, they might play Fion, I guess. Um, we get welder and flint. Just in case we need more fire energy. Sure, why not? Um, we do just win next turn. Just kind of waiting on it. First GX here. Question is, does our opponent have attach E power? If they do, they do just win. Um, if they don't, we win. Uh, I guess they could have a second reset stamp and reset us down to one, which would be annoying. Um, we'll have to see here. What do they got? Yeah, the, uh, the what's it called it's annoying. Going the, uh, if they do have another reset stamp, that would be annoying. If they do just have E power, and energy they do just win we didn't take a knockout last turn so they can't play rosa which is a big deal and this deck plays a lot of rosa and that's usually how you find this guy is you go rosa for the fire energy the rushy ram zekrom and the energy switch and you put them in play kind of out of nowhere but if we don't take a knockout they can't play the rosa they're actually going to utilize him here uh oh this is dangerous for us and straight up retreat to him now we are like okay do they have the fire energy that's uh that's what I'm wondering right now. Do they have the fire energy for the rest of your Zekrom? Hmm. We can't knock it out. We could run to the baby Blacephalon. We could also just bursting burn and then see how it goes from there. We could we could Welder to the active. We could get double custom, I think, actually. We could get double custom. Alright, so let's go with Welder to the active. Oh, I should have actually probably flinted uh fire flinted away some energy. Oof, there's a lot of energy. Yeah, fire flinted for some energy to thin out the deck. Pretty unlikely we'd hit the double custom no matter what, but. It would have been a little bit more ideal. Um, there's our last welder. We go attach here, retreat, bursting burn. Attach here, retreat, blazer. That's what I could do. Um, but I think bursting burn is actually a little bit better. I'm going to attach here no matter what, but I am going to go with the bursting burn. And if they do have the fire energy, we'll go ahead and leave the game up to a coin flip here. If they do have the fire, we'll be able to attach next turn and use mind blown for 250 no matter what. So if they get tails and take 30, we'll knock them out. If they get heads, well, they kind of just, uh, just knock us out. So we'll see what they have here. Oh, that's a lightning, and I think that's a pass. All right, so we're going to end up winning this one over the Nuzzle deck just barely. Super close. Like I said, the one prizer matchups for this deck are pretty tough because um, we need a lot every single turn to be able to keep up in the prize exchange. Um, able to just barely pull this one out here. We had a really good start. Like I said, got that Heat Factory in play immediately, and we we're just drawing cards and cards and cards. Never got punished for it. We always found that Blacephalon when we needed it. 
And uh, yeah, we'll take the dub here over the our opponent's Nuzzle Raichu deck. Um, just barely, very close there at the end. And that's going to do it for this video on the Greensville Cephalon deck. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give the video a like. If you enjoyed the content, subscribe. Have a good day. Thanks for watching, and peace.